We're going to turn to Isaiah chapter 18. I have a lot of stuff to talk about tonight. Uh, the, there is no doubt that a lot of things, a lot of action took place the past few weeks. Uh, what I'm going to tell you today is going to be pretty... Uh, you're going to go, man, Jesus can come any moment. That's what you'll feel like. I mean, there's so much action going on. And I just recently found out, I don't know, uh, I'm not going to mention the documentation, but you can look it up yourselves. Did you, did you all hear about the Georgia Guidestones? That's, there was an explosion? No. Believe it or not. If you, some of you know about the Georgia Guidestones, that's pretty significant for, global, for the global elitists, for their agenda, actually. So it was pretty interesting that there was an explosion that happened over there. So I don't know what's going on, but a lot of action is going on. It seems like that the next step for the tribulation or for the Antichrist is about to kick in. Okay, <clears throat> let's begin. As we all know what happened with the decision with Roe versus Wade, the, a lot of the <clears throat> people in America, they thought it was a tragic time. That was a horrible day. And, and they thought that it's the end of the world. So obviously we're, we're in mourning with them. And obviously we just feel horrible what happened with Roe versus Wade. And some of you came to me for therapy sessions and said that <laughs> it was a, just a horrible time. How could this happen to our country? <laughs> No, of course, I'm just being sarcastic. But anyways, uh, if you look at the article from the Washington Post, how the Supreme Court ruled in the major decisions of 2022, that's the title of their article, but they give every detail of which justices approved or opposed the decisions, but most of the decisions were in favor of the conservative groups. So a lot of Christians have gotten excited about that one. Uh, one is obviously is the abortion. So it went from uh, six verses three. So obviously there was uh, more uh, restrictions in place concerning about abortion. Some people went as so far as to say abortion is banned, but obviously that's not what it means. Uh, what it meant was is that it's not as uh, it's not as free or as forced where the women can practice the abortion. That's the idea. So some states are able to make their own decisions this time. So obviously, in our state, nothing changed. Uh, <laughs> so nothing changed in our state. Whereas other states, they immediately took action. <clears throat> the Second Amendment won to the favor of what the conservatives wanted. Uh, concerning about climate change as well, it won to the favor of what the conservatives wanted. Uh, concerning about immigration, it didn't, though. Concerning about immigration, it didn't. The COVID and vaccine mandates, it won to the favor of what the conservatives wanted. Another decision is with uh, Biden versus Missouri. And what ha happened over here is that uh, it won to the favor of the liberals. Separation of church and state, uh, it won fully toward the conservative side. School prayer, won fully yeah, to the conservative side. Uh, Guantanamo Bay and state secrets, oh, no way we're going to win on that one. <laughs> they, the government and certain elitists obviously want some things not to be shown. Uh, let's see, this is pretty surprising, death penalty and religion. <laughs> obviously, Thomas is the only one who stood his own ground and the rest of them went, no, you know, so, or they, uh, they went, they made a decision on their part that disagreed with Thomas. Public displays of religion, wow, it was very surprising. All the conservatives and the liberal justices were in full agreement on that one. So it went toward our favor on that one. Uh, and then a lot of other major decisions. So these were all the major decisions. If you're curious, you can even look at that at the liberal, even liberal news source, Washington Post explains all of that. So obviously the liberal world were uh, we're in paranoid mode, we're in angry mode, because a lot of it won to the conservatives' favor, the Christians' favor, and the Christians obviously are thinking this is a revival, and they're thinking that they can bring the kingdom on earth. Well, I have a twist at the end that might surprise you, and I'll explain that one. Now, don't get me wrong, I am happy with uh, whatever thing that the country is leaning toward that's more Christian, that's more moral. So don't get me wrong about that. 
However, I'm not jumping, oh, to joy and think that I can bring the kingdom of God here on earth, that I can make a difference in this country. You got to realize the Bible prophesied the Antichrist has to come in the future. That's what the Bible prophesied, so it ain't going to change anything. You might bring a uh, revival or some kind of awakening in the country, but guess what? It's only temporary and it's limited, okay? You have to realize that. Let's see how the conservatives responded. So in Twitter, it's so hilarious, Caroline Kitchener, who is one of the journalists, put in her tweet, I just spoke with Elizabeth Warren, who suggested the Biden administration establish par Planned Parenthood outposts on the edges of national parks. Quote, they could put up tents have trained personnel, and be there to help people who need it. It's time to declare a medical emergency. So they're going to put up tents. Why? To help out, yeah, <laughs> Pocahontas. To just help out the women so that they can have more freedom and more access to do abortions. Here's another article from uh, ABC 15 News. What did Kamala Harris say? Title of the article, Kamala Harris links Supreme Court abortion decision to American slavery. Wow, these liberals, uh, they're throwing a fit. Now here's an interesting article from uh, Infowars from Alex Jones. Now obviously I don't uh, endorse his doctrine, but in his article right here, he had a whole bunch of tweets, and within this whole bunch of tweets he had all these liberal Democrats who actually gave some crazy statements. The title of his article is Videos, Democrats saying they support abortions without any limits. You'd be surprised. Here's one from, the tw uh, from all their tweets or social media accounts. John Fetterman, I don't, uh, are there any limits on abortion you would find appropriate? John Fetterman tweets. I don't believe so, no. This is from RNC Research as well, June 26, 2022. Another one from RNC Research, June 26, 2022. New York City Mayor Adams says, no, I do not. Here's another one from uh, John McCormack. And then uh, Democrat Representative AOC. Not every Democrat is pro-choice. We really need to reassess if it's appropriate for them to continue to serve. <laughs> this is uh, from California Representative Jackie Speyer. Uh, told pro-abortion screechers to get ready for war while Nancy Pelosi is ordering supporters to rise up and Maxine Waters wants pro-abortion screechers to fight while vowing to defy the SCOTUS. Uh, Democratic Representative Jackie Speyer, he, uh, the person says right here, calls on a pro-abortion extremist to armor up because there's a war out there. Uh, there's uh, Democrat Representative Maxine Waters says, the blankety blank with the Supreme Court, we will defy them. Scary thing, you ain't seen nothing yet. So there's just so many... Uh, tweets and stuff right here of Democrats where th you can see they support abortions without any limits. As a matter of fact, if you even see some of these uh, college students, the younger and younger, younger generations, how they respond to abortion, they, they even say even if the baby comes out that they would do the abortion. Okay, you got to realize how wicked and evil this generation is getting to because they're so blinded to think this is my body. So if there are any issues and then the abortion didn't go successfully and the baby just accidentally came out, then yeah, I would be full on support for that one. You gotta realize that's the day and age we live in. That's the day and age we live in. There are some people who actually say that. Another one is from Catholic News Agency, their uh, YouTube channel, but they posted a video. Obviously, I'm not endorsing Catholics, but they were the ones who recorded this. Title of the art video is, Video Shows Jane's Revenge Vandals Defacing Florida Pregnancy, Pregnancy Center. Now, I don't know if you've heard of this, but there's a wacko extremist group called Jane's Revenge. And Jane's Revenge, this group, 
I mean, you're talking about Antifa and stuff like that. This is one of those groups that just storms into the centers, the buildings and stuff like that, and then just do total terrorist acts. Like, they would break into the buildings, ruin the buildings. If you watch this video, I mean, the office is like a wreck. The big office table looked like it was cut in half or something. Like, these guys are violent people. These are not loving, peaceful protests, you have to realize. Some of these people are just violent and dangerous. Another one is from WISN 12 News. Title of their video is, Group Claims Responsibility for Madison Anti-Abortion Office Attack. Now look at that. These groups are so bold that they'll just claim, yeah, I'm the one who did that terrorist attack on that anti-abortion office. These are so bold people, why? Because they have so much freedom and even support and media support and government support. Demon-possessed people nowadays we live in. You got to realize that's the day and generation that we live in. It's not a peaceful world that we live in. Don't think that, well, we can bring revival and what a bunch of nice people. No, it's not. Do you realize how many uh, millions of babies were killed through this abortion? Now, they don't want to say baby, but I'll just say that, okay? If you want to say scientifically inaccurate or whatever, fine, you know, but this is my choice of words, okay? My freedom of speech, so let me just say that, okay? So, how many millions of babies died? More than the Holocaust. The Holocaust, you'd be generous if you say 7 million Jews died at the Holocaust. That's pretty generous if you say that. But do you know how many... Uh, babies from abortions from 1980 to 2019 all you have to do is look at the Guttmacher abortion estimates and when you look at that each year from 1980 was one here's one from 1980 1 million five hundred forty five thousand 1985 one million five hundred seventy eight thousand 1991, 1,549,000. This is only United States. Do you realize that? Now, when you go from 1989 to 2019, not 2022, you know what it is? More than 20 million. 20 million. When you, uh, when you look at those babies in the ovens, and they go, wow, how horrible. Hey, that's no different when you actually... Uh, take that fetus, they like to call it, and it looks like that baby, and then it's just uh, burned up from, the, uh, from saline abortion or other stuff. But thing is, is that when they take out the baby or they cut it up or do whatever that they want to do, if you take the pictures of that with the Holocaust and then mingle them all together, where are you going to see much of the difference, huh? And then you get a gas when you see that, those pictures of babies in the ovens, but not the abortion. Did you ever see the abortion pics of those fetuses killed or stuff like that? Did you ever see that? And that don't trouble you. You don't have something in your heart that's bothered by that? That's disturbing. You've been brainwashed by this liberal world, you have to realize. That's what I think. That should be very disturbing. Go to Isaiah 13, 18. Isaiah 13, 18. The Bible doesn't say much about abortion, but there is one passage that's used in Exodus. In Exodus, it talks about, uh, and probably numbers, but I don't really see that. I see it more as in Exodus. So in Exodus, it talks about when a woman is pregnant with a child, that the seed within her, if some outsider does damage to her and then it dies, then there should be compensation made. Now, some people would like to go around that and say, well, see, the baby is not alive, so then it's not murder, so it's okay to do abortions. But it doesn't change the fact whether you say, whether God considers it alive or not. The point is, God sees it negatively. It doesn't change that fact, and God wants compensation for that. There's a penalty for that. But surprisingly, you don't give penalties for people who do that nowadays for abortions. Go to Isaiah chapter 13, verse 18. I always wondered about that, and I think, so I'll just say that I think, okay? I don't have much proof on this one, but 
there are three verses that seem to show that when the baby is killed within, within the woman's body, that the Lord does not approve of that, and it looks like murder as well, believe it or not. So there are three verses that I found on that one. Isaiah 13, 18, their bows also shall dash <clears throat> the young men to pieces, and they shall have no pity on the what? Fruit of the womb. Look at this, their eyes shall not spare what? Children. Now look at that. When God talks about a group of people who uh, kills the children, he puts in line with that the fruit of the womb when the woman has uh, fruit in her womb. God considers that, yeah, those children are actually getting murdered and killed by this group of people. Go to Hosea 9, Hosea chapter 9, verse 13. Hosea chapter 9, and then we'll look at verse 13 through 14. Now, some people might say, well, in that verse, it's separated, where the children aren't spared, and then the fruit of the womb being killed. So those two things are separated. Maybe, but the thing is, I think they're in the same context because when I compare other verses, when God talks about children being slaughtered or something like that, murder of babies, he puts that in the same line with a woman when her seed perishes inside her body. But here are even more closer verses, uh, more close verses on that. Hosea chapter 9, verse 13 through 14. Look at this. Ephraim, as I saw Tyrus, is planted in a pleasant place. But Ephraim, look at this, shall bring forth his children to the what? Murderer. Murderer. All right. Now, for some of you who don't know, this passage is talking about God's judgment on Ephraim. And God's judgment on Ephraim is that their children is going to be brought forth to the murderer. Who's the murderer? That's the devil. So the murderer is going to come down and make sure that the children of Ephraim, that their children perish. But God calls it murder, right? Now, what, he, what does he put here with children being turned over to the murderer? The next verse, Give them, O Lord, what wilt thou give? Give them a what? Miscarrying womb. Wow. wow, that's not the baby out. That's inside. Yeah, that's and God wow. considers that being turned over to the murderer. Okay, look at Job chapter 10. Job chapter 10. Now, this one is probably the strongest. Job chapter 10. Job chapter 10, verse 18. I've received questions like this before about uh, is the baby or is the person alive once they breathe? And Genesis chapter 2 is used when God breathed into the person's nostrils, man became a living soul. And I taught that as well. However, there is something interesting at Job chapter 10. It may be that the person receives life even within the womb. So let's look at Job chapter 10 and verse 18. As I mentioned before, it's very important to be always open, to always be open to what the Bible says. If it, even if it differs with your point of view, I'm always open to that and I'll mention that to the church. It's important. That way we can search the scripture. You can search the scripture yourself and have a, make a more informed decision. Now look at Job chapter 10, verse 18. Wherefore then hast thou brought <clears throat> me forth out of the womb? Okay, now look at this one. Oh, that I had given up the ghost. See, that means dying, right? Because he received, give up the ghost. That's basically receiving that life in the person. So then the person gets that breath or that life within him. But look at the next part. And what? And no eye had seen me. What does that mean? That means that baby's not out. He prefers that he was never out of the womb. He prefers that he was in the womb, no eye saw him, and that what? He'd given up the ghost there. That's interesting. Then that means that the person had the ghost, or basically the life, inside the womb. <clears throat> So that seems to be the case. Let's look at Leviticus 18. Leviticus 18. I don't profess to be a doctor, and I cannot tell you 
everything in the scriptures about what the Bible clearly says uh, when life started. But I will tell you this, okay? I do have the utmost proof of this one. There is no doubt God disapproves of abortion. Amen. And there is no doubt that God puts uh, abortion in negative light throughout the scriptures. What about the exceptional scenarios about a person being raped and stuff like this at the dark ages and stuff like that? One, if I'm going to be, so I'm going to be as fair as possible to the opponent's side. I don't agree with them, so I don't agree with what I'm going to say, okay? But I'm trying to play fair arguments with them, okay? Even if those exceptions are allowed and they're tolerated, how often does that happen in America, for crying out loud? How much of it was born out of sin? And that's why you want to do abortion. Okay? Leviticus chapter 18, verse 21. You've heard this a lot from the people, but they've likened the abortion to sacrificing children to Molech. Basically, that's found in Leviticus 18, 21, where these people, these pagans, gave up their children, their babies, to be sacrificed to Molech. And that is actually very true. That happened in Carthage before. So Carthage was very infamous. The god Molech, if you study reports on it, it will turn your blood cold. It was rampant throughout that culture. It was normalized in that culture that so many children and babies died that when archaeologists dug up the remains, they were, their blood turned cold on how much bones and uh, babies that they found. So that is real. That's why God, uh, God warned about this at Leviticus chapter 18 and verse 21. I'm assuming they can see that verse, right? Okay. It says here, the Bible reads, And thou shalt not let any of thy seed pass through the fire to Molech, neither shalt thou profane the name of thy God. I am the Lord. So notice that God condemned sacrificing the children where they go through the fire and they're burned to Moloch. Now, why is it that a lot of people compare sacrificing children to Moloch with today's abortions? Well, believe it or not, I think there is a connection spiritually, okay? I know that there might be, it's not the same thing as the science of abortion, you know, and it's not like we're sacrificing in front of a cow and burning up a baby. Uh, that is born out of the womb. So I'm not saying that. I know that there are differences, but I believe that there is a same spirit behind that. Now, bear with me, and I'll tell you why. The first thing is, you know, people make a big deal about abortion, but did you ever study about the history of abortion? Were you ever curious about that? And I don't mean the beginning of the United States of America. Did they miss out a lot of what I said? They heard everything even before so far? Okay. I'm not talking about Roe versus Wade when it started or even when the women's rights came out and then abortion started to come out in America. No, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the origins of it. Did you go all the way back? When you study the origins of abortion, you know who were practicing those? Believe it or not, which country you think? You know what's one of the most ancient sources you'll find on abortion? The country God condemns. Quite often in the Bible, Egypt. You don't think there's a spirit behind that? And I'm talking about abortion. I'm not talking about sacrificing a baby that comes out of the womb. I'm talking about an abortion. Study the history of abortion. Egyptians were doing that. No, no surprise right there about other pagans who practiced it too. Here's one of the most disturbing things. There's a thing called bass relief at Angkor Wat. If you look at one of those archaeological discovery, it was dated 1150. It depicted a, a woman receiving an abortion. But if you look at that archaeological finding, the, the carving or the sculpture shows that it's actually a demon performing the abortion on a woman and being sent to the underworld. You don't think that there's a demonic spirit behind this abortion thing? I think there is. Even Wikipedia, it. look it up at Wikipedia. It'll tell you all that stuff, and you'd be surprised how many pagans were practicing this. I think there is a demonic spirit behind all of this. Another thing to consider is 
look at the verse, Leviticus chapter 18, verse 21, and see how it matches very well. It's very uncanny. It matches very well with today's abortions. Let me ex explain the following. You've heard of Saline abortion? So uh, S-A-L-I-N-E, -E, when you look at that abortion, the dying infant is chemically burned as it thrashes about for minutes to maybe even hours. Oh, do you see a similar picture with the babies being burned up to Moloch, being burned up, thrashing about for minutes? This type of abortion could be even worse than burning because this can go to hours. Here's another one, suction abortion. If you were to be in that room and there's a suction abortion going on, and then if you are also in the room where the baby is sacrificed to Moloch, will you see too much of a difference with the loud roar of the vacuum pump that muffles the gushing sound of the infant compared to the loud roar of the fire muffling the sound of the infant? The same... <laughs> Here's a third one. Infant sacrifice was common in Carthage. Now see how this matches America. Okay, let me read this for you. This is from Mosca, M-O-S-C-A. Uh, it's P-G. The title of his work is Child Sacrifice in Canaanite and Israelite Religion. And I'm reading a, a, from Harvard University it was his PhD dissertation in 1975. You know what he said? It is impossible to deal with this subject at any length without coming to terms with the human dimension. How could a culture so well developed morally, intellectually, and materially tolerate so abominable a custom? How could a sophisticated people sanction what seems to be such a barbaric practice for so long a time? How at the most visceral and critical level could human parents bring about the destruction of their own child? Doesn't that sound like America? The culture? Oh, guess what? He was describing about the culture of Carthage, actually. What men learn from history, remember, is what? Men never learn from history. You, they, today's generations repeat the pattern, share the same spirit of possession, devil possession, and continue the same practice in different ways. There's nothing new under the sun. That should disturb you. But this should be even more disturbing on how this one matches very well with demonism. So then the Carthage, we've seen the similarities right here. One is the burning, right? And that matched up right here with today's abortions, the burning. Another one is the roar that muffles. Same thing right here with today's abortion. Another one is the culture. Look at the historical evidence of culture. No different. No different. You see a similar spirit behind this? I see something. I see something. When the Lord uh, gives seed and when you are, when you're able to give birth, I wonder how the devil takes advantage of this. And I wonder if it comes down to this. Even more so, how I can see a demonic spirit behind this is if you look at the article from The Conversation, this is from Joseph P. Laycock in Texas State University. The title of his article is How the Satanic Temple is Using Abortion Rituals to claim religious liberty against the Texas heartbeat bill. You know why they're doing that? To help out those uh, 
women or those demon-possessed liberals or whoever to give them more freedom to do abortion. But isn't it interesting that they connected with the satanic temple and call it abortion rituals? Ritual, ritual. I thought that uh, today's abortion is very different from how they did rituals with babies back then. No, there's a clear difference. <laughs> uh, don't kid me, bud. Especially after that. This is real stuff, guys. I'm not just saying it. This is real. I'm quoting you documented sources, too. It's disturbing how our day and age is ending up with. And they, have, they don't bat an eye. They think this is normal. Well, because of the decisions made at the Supreme Court, and let's be honest, there are people in America who are angry. They're not happy with what's going on. And they see, plain as day, they can see how wicked and how downhill our country's going. So with the decisions made at the Supreme Court, you wouldn't believe what's going on. With Biden, you know, having his little Lulu moments, then the people are not dumb. Title from AP News. So look how it's going Dems, uh, Democrats with the Republicans. Look at the game change. This is interesting. Title of the article from AP News, more than one million voters switch to GOP in warning for Dems. One million of them switched. So what used to be Republican, now they're entertaining the thought of become, uh, what used to be Democrat, now they're ent entertaining the thought of becoming Republican. This is from CNN. CNN even confessed this. Title of their video in their YouTube channel, the 2022 election looks very good for Republicans. You know why? A lot of people have been switching from Democrats to Republicans because they know that today's office administration is a joke. No one's, a, no one's fooled to see that, all right? It's even funny, even AOC, when, uh, was it MSNBC? If you find that video, you can find it, where she mentions about what she thinks about Biden and would she endorse him. She never gave a clear answer. She just went like, you know, we have to see about the voting and, you know, what's best for the people and, you know, supporting his policies. And then after she said all that, the MSNBC reporter said, that's not a yes. And then she's like, well, and she never said yes and then just went like this. If you got AOC, AOC not putting her hand of approval on today's administration, you do know there's a big problem going on in this country. A lot of people are not going for today's president now. They know that there's something, there's something rotten in Denmark, as some people would use the phrase. But Elon Musk, who's a pretty smart guy who predicts things, he's no moron either. Title of the video from Fox News, Elon Musk, massive red wave coming in 2022. He believes that. You know why? People are seeing the foolishness of what's going on right now. They're not dumb. The New York Post posted an article, and if you don't trust the news source, then look at the picture. Title of the article, Biden used cheat sheet yeah. while doubling down on unscripted message to oust Putin. You know what his cheat sheet had? I kid you not. This is so funny. They took a pic, they went close on it, and then it, it has a point one two and four it and then bold headlights too it was bold and underlined it says tough putin q a talking points number one if you weren't advocating for regime change what did you mean can you clarify and then it has sub bullet points clearly as day underneath that i was expressing the moral outrage i felt toward the actions of this man they gave him as that option to answer that particular question and another one I was not articulating a change in policy. Number two, Macron said that, uh, I, I can't read that clearly, uh, but basically, is this now threatening to splinter unity with your NATO allies? And then there's a bullet point of an answer for Biden to use. No, NATO has never been more united. This is written in his cards. And actually, he even had a card where he was picking news reporters. The, the particular news reporters that he want. And obviously, it's not a secret. Everybody knows that Biden publicly stated that liberal news media reporters were complaining. 
Biden don't take questions from reporters. He don't answer. So this is like really, really bad. So there are times he won't take questions for reporters. There are some times that he don't do that. And then the times that he does, it's embarrassing. This is very embarrassing. Biden said, I carry this card with me. <laughs> he would say. He pulled notes out of his jacket. I don't know if you notice that, guys. Next time, watch him. He'll pull out notes out of his jacket. So this is... <laughs> He also said this, I'll take your questions, and as usual, folks, they gave me a list of the people I'm going to call on. Yeah. Biden told yeah. <laughs> the assembled media one time. Uh, you can look at that article, and then you can examine the pics and then compare the other sources. This is really bad, guys. This is really bad. When I looked at those no cards, any fool can use that. Yeah. There's no doubt there's something going on with him. Yeah. There is something going on with him. This is a tweet that came out from Benny Johnson, and he posted the particular clip from Jimmy Kimmel live, and you can watch it, but if you watched it, guys, it was so embarrassing how Biden tried to talk to Jimmy Kimmel that Kimmel had to interrupt him, explain to him, and then eventually cut off for TV break. But you can watch that and see, all right? But the source that I found was a video posted by Benny Johnson where he uh, posted a portion of that video. But if you look it up yourself, you'd be surprised. There's no doubt you feel actually not angry, but yeah. sad for this man. That's how bad it is. Yeah. There's no doubt that he should go to a retirement home or something, you know, that he's got to take it easy and that somebody's got to take care of grandpa or great grandpa. He's not doing well. CNN's not doing well. Everyone knows that this, these guys, they're going downhill. From Fox News, title of their article, CNN has smallest weekday audience among advertiser coveted demo in 22 years. How bad is it? Struggling CNN averaged only 56,000 viewers between ages 25 to 54 on Friday. Guys, there's no doubt CNN, I mean, is going down. Everybody knows that they're fed up. They're fed up with what's going on. This is from CBS News, okay? This is a CBS News source, okay? Look what they even confessed. Title of their article, CNN Plus. Did you all heard about CNN Plus? When I was in the airlines, they had that CNN Plus that they were advertising. It was a big thing that they were going to do. I think it was some streaming thing or online thing, but it was a big thing. They were putting all their effort to this. CNN Plus to shut down less, less than a month after launching. They're struggling, guys. It's, it's hilarious, some of these other clips that I found. But here's a video that you can watch from Mark Dice, and he actually showed these clips. The title of his video is, CNN had a little accident live on air. And then he put a clown emoji next to it. But if you watch that, guys, it's pretty embarrassing. CNN, I think it was Jake Tapper in his show, when he was doing the interview, the camera all of a sudden just went and then fell down on the ground like that. You know what that meant? Th th that, it was so bad that basically people were wondering, I wonder if they even have camera guys now. I wonder if they just put up a camera right there and the guy was just talking. So a lot of struggles are going on and rumors are spreading about CNN. <laughs> but another one is where Anderson Cooper was talking outside with other two reporters. One guy went outside and went, CNN, fake news, CNN, fake news, just passed by them like that. Guys, everybody is seeing them as clowns now. Everybody is seeing them as clowns. <laughs> They're going down. <laughs> this is very funny. This is from CNN itself, CNN Business, okay? Title of their uh, video, YouTube removes video from... January beep committee. That's all I'll say. You know why I'll say it that way? Because the AI system is very stupid. I'm going to tell you this. This is so funny. CNN was complaining where, you know, remember that big thing once January beep came out and they wanted to make a big deal like, this was such an important day where we almost lost our democracy because of what Trump did and uh, we'll never forget January beep, we'll never forget January beep, we'll never forget that day, you know. 
And it's so hilarious that when they posted videos of that, the stupid YouTube AI system caught that because remember, it targets certain words, right? So then it starts to remove their videos. <laughs> when they were like, hey, I was trying to talk bad about Trump and then January beep and then why did you delete me? So then Brian Gay Stelter, you know, the guy that talks like, yeah, yeah, like that guy. He was like complaining, what are we gonna do? You know, that uh, this, this is horrible. You know, we gotta report to YouTube, but unfortunately their AI, you know what they've done? They've reaped what they've sown. Because they've hounded YouTube, Google, and all these guys so much, they amped up their AI that they were e that the liberals were even suffering from that. Yeah. How funny, man. How funny, man. Give a big laugh, man. This is is so silly how the how demon possessed these people are and that they've definitely tasted their own men medicine. Uh, ridiculous. So this is all good news, right? I mean, praise the Lord, we're going to bring a revival and stuff like that. Now look, don't get me wrong, okay? Is that I'm glad on, that CNN is taking a dose of their medicine, that the liberals, the Democrats, that they're getting a dose of their medicine. There's plenty of videos, and you can find it yourself, of Kamala Harris getting very upset of the interviewers asking her a particular question. And then she got upset and triggered and she said, no, those are just rumors. I know that people think that we're very unpopular and that we're not going to survive the next election that comes out, but we're still in charge. No one's in control of us. Like you'll hear statements like that from her, from certain inter interviews. And if you look up the popularity poll rating of Biden and Harris, it's very bad, guys. It's very bad. Harris is lower than Biden, believe it or not. <laughs> So with all this going on and the decisions in the Supreme Court, we're going to make this a Christian country again, right? Well, you got to realize this. One, what did the Bible prophesy? That the Antichrist has to come. He's going to set up his uh, new world. Uh, he's going to set up his NWO system. Okay? Yeah, uh, you all know what that means. I have to use abbreviated words sometimes. So he's going to set up his NWO system. Think about this. Guys, even when we had Republicans uh, a few years ago, did that change the spiritual state of the country or did the spiritual state continue to get worse? Yeah, worse. Sure, maybe the former president before our current president made some big things where Christians were psyched out about and maybe even he did some big moves that no other president did like him before. But look at the overall spiritual state of the country. I don't see revival. Yeah, come on. I don't even see conservatives going to church after that, reading their Bibles. Yeah. And I don't see the conservatives who do go to churches where they go to the right churches. Majority of them apostate, uh -huh. messed up. And guess who they vote for? Yeah. So I don't see something like that. You got to realize the devil, what he's aiming for is not which political party. Because he, he can uh, choose whomsoever he will. Did you read Luke 4? The, king, the devil said, the kingdoms of this world are given to me because God gave it to him, and I can give it to whomsoever I will, the devil says. See, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. He can play political party. The point is, though, is where the spiritual state lies with the people. And then wh whatever the spiritual state is, if it's bad, then, and if it's getting worse, guess what? Nothing ruined the devil's plan. You know, the Babylon Bee, they just posted a video about, you know, Satan saying, yeah, we lost, uh, we lost a battle and the people got a victory or the Christians got a victory because of abortion. But, you know, I mean, I was laughing, you know, and, you know, I like the video, but it's pitiful that to say that Satan said, I lost a battle that day. No, trust me, guys, because think about this. When, let's say that they don't be aborted, that they get born then what are they, they going to get born into if they don't receive the gospel, especially when the Antichrist sets it up? He gets more slaves. Here's another thought to consider. What if the devil is play, changing his game? Because he knew that the Antichrist is not going to come for a while, so let's do abortions. That's what I want. But until, when the Antichrist comes, let's do a game change. And then, that way I can have slaves to worship me in the future. 
You ever thought about that? You got to realize the devil ain't no moron and fool. He can have something all set up in place. Did you look at the justice appointed by Republicans? Look at every single justice in the Supreme Court who made the decision appointed by Trump and Bush, okay? Appointed only by Republicans. Every single one of them is Catholic. Every single one. I didn't say Dems. Dems were appointing Protestants. You're like, how can these Protestants be so... Yeah, I know. Okay, you get those, okay? You get them. Just because you're Christian, you call yourself Christian or Protestant, don't mean anything, does it? But look at that. Isn't it funny that the Republicans, every single one, is a Catholic? And I don't see a different religion. The only one is uh, Neil Gor uh, Gorsuch, if I'm pronouncing his name right. He's Anglican, but he's also Catholic. Here it is. George, uh, John, Roberts, John Roberts, Catholic, appointed by Republican. Clarence Thomas, appointed by Republican, Catholic. Samuel Alito, appointed by Republican, Catholic. And then Neil Gorsuch, appointed by Republican, Catholic. Brent Kavanaugh, appointed by Republican, Catholic. Amy Coney Bure, appointed by Republican, Catholic. That's all Republican appointed uh, Supreme Court justices. I never gave a different religion, except the one that's part Anglican as well. Isn't that, that should disturb you. What if the devil, if those Christians are right that the Pope has something to do with the Antichrist, becoming the future Antichrist? What if the devil realized now's the time where the Antichrist comes in, Come on. I have to make sure the Catholics have more of a level playing field? Because Fox News, praise the Lord for Fox News, their champion for the Christian faith. Do you know most of them are Catholic? Yeah, kick them. So then the devil's people, they're crowding in with the Christians, mm -hmm. trying to be like us. We're on your side. And the Christians supporting them? Why? Because the devil, if the Antichrist comes from that Catholic background, he wants that upper playing field where they get more power. And what I mean by more power will truly disturb you. Look at Matthew 24. Matthew 24, verse 19. Matthew chapter 24, and then we'll look at verse 19. Like I told you before, what if the devil is trying to change his game so that the Antichrist can have babies born into his world and kingdom and they can receive the mark of the beast? The younger you get them, the more brainwashed you can get them. That's why they want your children in blankety-blank story hour where they look like aliens. You know what I'm talking about, right? I have to say blankety blank, not because I'm cussing, but because, you know, what I, where I'm at. How the dumb AI system might misunderstand it as, right? So what if that's the end game? What if that's, uh, what if that's the goal of the devil? Well, the Bible warns you about the tribulation. The, how God sees it is not a good thing, that babies get born into the tribulation when the Antichrist rules. He sees that as actually something tragic. Look at Matthew chapter 24, verse 19. And woe unto them that are with child. See, that's women pregnant with children. And to them that give suck in those days. Verse 21, context is tribulation. For then shall be great tribulation. What if God knows it's a tragedy? for those babies to be born, because that's when the Antichrist wants them. As a matter of fact, if you look at some of these interesting articles, NC, this is from NIH.gov. The title of their article that they posted, it's a, it's a research article, Rel Religiosity and Fertility in the United States. The Role of Fertility Intentions. Okay, what's the intentions of this with babies born? You know what they said? A big factor to that is this particular religion, Catholicism. 
And you know what they said right here when they compare Catholics with the Protestants? They said when they compared the Catholics with the Protestants, they said higher fertility among Catholics was attributed to Catholic doctrine prohibiting birth control, but also to education and income differences between Catholics and Protestants, to the distinctive family culture of immigrant Catholic populations, and to the prominent place of churches and Catholic schools in Catholic communities. You got to realize that in this research paper, they know as they examined, with the babies being born and a lot of it, majority, a lot, huge number of that is Catholic. What's the devil trying to do? He's changing demographics because he knows it's about time that this guy is coming in. Well, if you look at what's going, let's look at the Catholic Church then. If the Antichrist comes from the Catholic Church, what's going on over there? The video title from Rome Reports in English, title of the video, Pope Francis to visit the tomb of Celestine V, the first pope to resign. Why? Because rumors were going around about Pope Francis getting off his uh, throne, about him resigning. But the first pope to ever resign is Celestine V. Why would he visit his tomb? Here's an another interesting thing. The other guy, Ratzinger, the other more re recent po pope who resigned, if I recall to my knowledge, Ratzinger, if you look at that video, they show, or they mention right there, that even the more recent pope who resigned did the same thing. He visited the tomb of Celestine V. Isn't that interesting? Not just Pope Francis, there's another pope before him as well, who resigned, what did he do? He visited the Pope, Celestine V's tomb, the first Pope to ever resign. There's something going on. In fact, something's definitely going on when Newsweek and a lot of other articles posted, title of their article, Black or Asian Pope tipped to succeed Francis if he resigns. There's decisions going around right now. Things are being set up, believe it or not. Elon Musk is another big name where people see him as paving the way for a lot for the technology for the Antichrist, right? Guess what? Always go back to the Antichrist city, Rome. Reuters uh, article title, Elon Musk breaks silence on Twitter. Post a picture with the Pope. Wow. He visited the Pope. There's a lot of uh, action going on, guys. There's a lot of action going on. Here's another one from uh, APB, uh, ABP Live. ABP Live. But they claimed in the title of their article, China President Xi Jinping uh, reportedly suffering from cerebral aneurysm. Whoa, the big names of the elites that you would know about who are changing the NWO today, why are they all leaving all of a sudden? Here's another one from Fortune, title of their article, Goop to remove cancer-stricken Putin underway in Russia, Ukrainian intelligence chief says. Putin's also got health issues going on. He's got, here's another one. Let's look at Israel. That's where all the action is, right? The Times of Israel. Remember that new government that they were setting up and new parties uh, because Netanyahu and... Well, look what happened. It didn't go long. Title of their article, Knesset, that's the name of their group, disbands. Sets elections for November 1st. That, that group didn't last for long. All of a sudden, Israel is now changing their government real quick. And, they're want, and now the elections are getting even sooner yeah. for Israel. The, uh, the time gap has gotten even shorter, and they're looking for a leader. Some of them were talking about Benjamin Netanyahu can make a comeback now. But this is like, notice Israel's government is also 
about to change leadership. Rome's changing leadership. This guy seeing something important that he has to visit him. And then this guy, our current president, we know he's really losing it. And then you notice that with midterm elections and everything in America, there's no doubt leadership is changing. And then we get China, he's suffering. Russia, he's suffering health issues. What's going on? Are the big leaders fading away? Paving a way for a particular leader, maybe? Israel having problems too, and they're changing leadership? It just takes one good guy that the world will admire who can resolve all those issues. Here's another one from Washington Post, even Queen Elizabeth. From the, uh, from the opinion, title of their article, Queen Elizabeth has done enough, the case for abdication. Why, she's getting old, and I believe her husband passed away, so then they're like, get ready for the takeover. The leadership's changing in England too now. And if you study it about the history of elites or globalism, it's, uh, England is heavily tied to that. So then Prince Charles, uh, yeah, I wrote Prince Andrew, excuse me, for, but Prince Charles is a big name. And they say that he's uh, one of those people who's going to take over after Queen Elizabeth. The title of the article from The Hill, Prince Charles calls for warlike effort to fight climate change. You know what he said? It seemed like he's even paving the way for the Antichrist. This guy is going to take over Queen Elizabeth, maybe. And if that's the case, you know what he said? He said this. We need a vast military-style campaign to marshal the strength of the global private sector with trillions at its disposal. We know this will take trillions, not billions of dollars. You know what he said right here? There's another one right here. Vast military-style campaign is needed to marshal the strength of the, listen, global private sector with trillions at its disposal. Did you hear that, guys? This is no longer public government or democracy. This is getting to a singular power more and more. And he's saying we need a, this person needs military support and power with trillions of dollars. What are they all doing? This, democ uh, this democracy divided powers is becoming something where they're leaving now and it's becoming more and more of a singular power entity. Isn't that something? Now here's the scariest one. This is the big bomb that I got, okay? But before I come to this big bomb, uh, if you want to think about the big shot globalists, what's one of the big names that come out? Bilderberg. Mm -hmm. Guess what? With all this going on, they had a meeting recently, the Bilderbergers, the big elitists, where people and Christians have been suspecting that Bilderbergers is one of the groups where eventually they will pave the way for that Antichrist. But they had a meeting recently. If you look at their website, it's titled Bilderberg Meeting 2022. 68th Bilderberg Meeting to take place 2nd through 5th, June 2022, in Washington, D.C., USA. What's going on, guys? And then the Georgia Guidestones, there was an explosion going on over there. And if some of you know about the Georgia Guidestones and then just read it, it's disturbing. A lot of it is basically paving the way for the Antichrist, actually. This is crazy. I don't know what's going on. It seems like... He who now letteth will let uh, is coming. The Antichrist is coming. But this is the most disturbing one. You ready for this? Van Jones from CNN, he did a TED Talk. And when I watched this, I was very surprised. He said that, you know, he had dealings with White House stuff, and then he, that was his expertise. And he thought he knew about elections. But when he studied it more, he said this. I was shocked and I didn't realize how much I didn't know about elections. And he talked about certain loopholes with the election process. 
and that he talked about that it's perfectly legal and also constitutional. You know what he said? Basically, look, Trump, why did he do all that before he got, you know, before he left the pre before he finally left the White House? You know why he made a big ruckus about, you know, voting fraud and then did all of that and then his lawyers started to do the routine where we're going to take this to the House of Representatives, stuff like that. It's not because Trump is stupid, guys. If you know, if you studied about him, his actions all this time, he had a reason for all of this. Basically, he's more honest than the other presidents because he knew all the loopholes, all the secrets, and he's unashamed to do them. The other presidents, they keep it, you know, more covered because of the controversy. But Trump knew what he was doing. This is scary, guys. Listen to this part, okay? It's not what you think like electoral college vote or popular vote. What happens is this. If there's a candidate who's not content about, you know, relinquishing his presidency because of how the voting turned out, he can claim vote fraud. And once he claims vote fraud, what happens is it, he can make quite a big ruckus and look, how many times did Trump bring that to court? Do you recall that? You know what he was trying to do? Make this a huge ruckus. What happens is it becomes such a big ruckus that it just disrupts all the other government stuff that they finally take it up to the House of Representatives. Now, guys, this is a real thing, all right? I'm quoting from the CNN guy, okay? And he mentioned that it can go to House of Representatives and then it's not by popular vote and not even electoral college vote. What happens then when you go to the House of Representatives, the final tally of vote is determined by what? It's determined by, the, uh, not by uh, the delegates, okay? It's done by majority of states. Do you know how many, uh, yes, we know a lot, you can have a huge, millions of people crowded in a blue state, but how scattered are those conservatives and Republicans in those other states, right? And look how many red states there are. You can go by majority of states, and those people, if they have their candidate, can pick him. Thus, you can retain the power. What if the devil sees all, guys, this is disturbing. What if the devil sees all of this and then he says, that's why I need to switch games right here. That way one day, if the Antichrist comes out and they want to kick him out, he can do this process. And you know what that Van Jones says? This is perfectly legal. This is perfectly constitutional. 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 You thought the Constitution would protect us and that we could be demo a democracy forever. Guys, this is paving a way for a singular power. More and more uh, divided powers are becoming more united and then becoming even more singular. Why? Because a smaller group of elitists want to control the power to eventually to 10 kings, to eventually one king as the Bible prophesied about 10 kings and a one world ruler. Wow something to think about. Heavenly Father, I pray that tonight's teachings have uh, made us see that the day and age we live in is not a free place and that we shouldn't be caught up with politics and all this kind of stuff, that we've got to be concentrating on what you want us to do, preach the gospel and then focus on the spiritual parts, not all this political stuff, because from what we study tonight, all this political stuff, it still will pave the way for the Antichrist. And I pray that we won't waste our lives on petty things, but on the right things. Just to be aware that you are coming. Just to be aware that this is the devil's domain. That way we know how to play smart and to survive and to keep the gospel out and not waste our lives in petty ambitions and trying to bring in our own kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.